Welcome to Blackfin Rods. My name is Al Winchell, and today we're going to go over and show you a little bit about our factory here and how fishing rods are produced and what we do to create a fishing rod and how special it is and to show you how it's fully 100% manufactured in the U.S. We are in the material and cutting room and in this phase in the segment of actually building the rod we start with the raw material. This is how your fishing rod starts. This is the pre-preg material. This is just a film or backing to separate the pieces so it doesn't stick. And you can see the fibers. I mean, you can see through it, but all the materials and chemicals are built in into this. So basically, we buy it manufactured in a roll like this. And what happens is every rod has its own design or pattern. A fishing rod can be one piece, can be up to eight pieces of material, depending on its cut. And what we call these, these are actually called slip cuts. So depending on the style or the taper or the flexibility of the rod is going to depend on how it's cut, how fat, or how narrow it is at the tip sections. But this is the way it starts. We have to start with this large sheet here, and then our patterns and what I mean by that, the pennant shape, these different patterns, you can see the different cuts and slips. So the pennant shape, this would be your tip section. This is the butt section down here. And this material gets cut, and like the rod can be one piece, up to eight pieces of material built in for one blank. And what we're going to do is after you see it being cut here, we're going to go outside and then we're going to lay it up and put it on the mandrel and roll it through the warehouse here and through the shop. And what you see on the back wall here, these are our templates and our guide placements. So I don't need a fishing rod of one model to duplicate. We constantly duplicate the same rod over and over. And all these markings are the different style guides and where the thread and where the guide is actually going to be placed. So any rod that we have built in the past or in the future, we've, everything is built in the computer. We pull the template off the wall, lay this up underneath the rod. And all the markings, all those markings you see are for different style guides, threads, and the placement on the rod. So it's on the exact same spot over and over all the time. The next process and next step after the material has been cut, we have our steel mandrels, which this is what gives the rod its shape. This is laid down. You got the tack point, Margaret? And every piece of material has a specific tack point and location, so we build the blank over and over exactly the same way. You have it marked down there? Go ahead. And as this material heats, it starts getting very sticky and very tacky, so it becomes very hard to work with, especially in the outdoor elements. It's next going to come over to the rolling table. After this first piece is on, like I was telling in the beginning, it can be one piece up to eight pieces, depending on the style or the taper that we're trying to create on the rod. So the second piece of material is going to come and get laid in here. What this machine is doing is compressing and rolling and compressing very tightly because we don't want to have any voids or pockets in the material itself while it's being built. Last thing we do is put the label on it and then we'll go to the next step.
what this machine is doing is putting cellophane around the blank. What it's doing is encapsulating the blank to the mandrel because when this material starts to heat, it's going to actually liquefy. And if we just put this in, it would just, just like a candle, it would just fall down like a candle. So by compressing it and putting cellophane, this is going to be like a mold of the actual finished rod. So as you can see, going from the butt end of the rod all the way down to the tip section, this cellophane is going to wrap and encapsulate the whole blank itself. And after this process completed, we have a certain pressure and pressure points that you want to keep constant. It will come all the way to the end, and then this whole batch of rods, just like this, will get baked in an oven. As you can see, all the material is encapsulated and wrapped very tightly. This process continues on and on, and what we can do in a single day is make multiple blanks of one style or make lots of different styles. That's We have the luxury of actually creating and making any style blank we want in a day. I don't have to wait on any other manufacturer or for overseas. It's nice to be able to take our raw material and make the piece here. After the piece is completed, the next process, it's going to go in the oven. And then we have to bake it, just as if you're baking a cake or a pie or anything. This is what happens to that. This oven is just a circulating oven. Bake it for a couple hours. We put racks in here. And then after this oven will get going and up to its temperature and heated, and then we'll have a finished rod. The next process, after it has been baked for about four hours and cooled down, we have now have to take the completed piece off the mandrel. This is a hydraulic puller. We have clamps. And in this process, this is actually going to pop the blank off the mandrel. You can't manually pull this off, so by this block actually pulling it off, locks it on, it releases it. Now we have our finished blank. So the framework's gone. We now have the same blank that you saw earlier. And now this whole process, all this cellophane is going to have to come off, and then we have a raw blank. And that's what this table is used for. And definitely we're not doing one at a time, but for this purpose, I'm just showing you. This is going to get very loud, but this is, was the cellophane that we put on in during the, uh, the, set, the third part of the stage of making the blank. And we continue that on, and now you have the raw blank and ready to be built. Now that we're ready to build the rod, there is a very important step, and it's called splining the rod. And there's a couple different ways you can spline the rod. You can roll the blank, and what I mean by the spline, this is the specific spot that you want the rod or want the guides lined up on. You roll the blank, you constantly roll it, and there's a sweet spot. By rolling it and finding that sweet spot every time. Now for a conventional rod, the guides are gonna go on the back side. If I was gonna make a spinning rod, they would go on this side. But it's very important, building a rod, to constantly turn and spline the rod like this and find that happy point. Another way you can do it, there's a splining machine, and that's going to do the same thing that we're doing. If you look, that label is constantly coming back to the same spot there at the base. Every time we spin it and put it under pressure, this is the sweet spot. If it's a conventional rod, the guides are going to go on the top. Spinning rod, the guides are going to go down. So by doing this, we mark it, start with the tip section and get it centered and get it lined up properly. But every time you roll it, it'll roll right back to that spot. And that's very important in making a rod to make sure you have the strength and the durability and longevity in the rod. This is the thread work that goes underneath the guides. And the section that she's working now is called an inlay. And you see how she's wrapping two different colored threads together, which gives the center check mark 
and being that with this, that's actually called an inlay because they're being wrapped together. She'll continue down and wrap a full wrap underneath the guide to give it more support and durability and wear. Some manufacturers will not put thread underneath. We like putting thread underneath, which gives it another impact zone. It helps protect versus having raw metal up against the glass. We also have one extra protectant underneath. Depending on the rod, the overwraps, which you just saw the underwrap go, the overwraps, there's going to be two, three, and sometimes even a fourth wrap especially on your 80s, your 130s, or your Unlimiteds. Um, and then we do multiple layers of epoxy to really compress and help keep the guides tight on the rods. Being wrapped too loosely or not tight enough, you're going to compromise and you'll, the guides will start to loosen up, you know, over time where that rod is under so much pressure like that. This process, this is the actual epoxy. It's a two-part epoxy that is protecting the thread work. Every, pretty much every rod is going to have some type of epoxy work done. And what you're looking at is he's applying the epoxy, using a little bit of heat to get the bubbles and um, the variations out so you have a nice smooth coat going onto the rod. And after it's applied, this rod has to continuously turn from anywhere from 4 to 12 hours depending on the type of epoxy that we're using. Now this is just the first coat. Rods will typically get a second, third, and maybe even a fourth, depending on how much thread work has been done and how thick it is and the finish that you're trying to get. So it's a very lengthy process. Uh, a lot of people ask me, how quick or, you know, how long does it take to make a fishing rod? Well, it depends on the style, the thread work. As you can see, every piece on here is individually done by the women. So this is actual individual thread that is wrapped. Um, I don't give time alignments because it's very hard to say, oh, it takes two days, it takes three days. Everything is built almost like a, an assembly line, um, but there is a lot of dedication and hard work that goes into it. These are not mass produced. Uh, we do typically build groups of rods, whether it's six or 10 or up to maybe 20 pieces of one style at a time. Um, and depending on how it's done and the colors and different that the customer actually wants, it just creates a lot of work, and it's, it can't be done. It's, my wife always says, oh, maybe we should just fax the rods to you. They want it done the next day. Well, as you can see, the process that we just went through, starting one from point A with the raw material into the finished product like this, it really, now that you can see how long it takes and how much work goes into building a blackfin rod, and um, it's... It's a good thing, and it's, it's very enjoyable to be able to do this and show you uh, how it's produced here you know, in the United States. And we're very proud of what we do in our product.